Hello. It is an honor to be here at this great conference. My name is Jan Erik Vinje. I'm the managing director of OpenAR Cloud. That's a global nonprofit organization uh, with a mission to drive open and interoperable real world spatial computing uh, technology, data, and standards for the benefit of all. I'm also a full stack developer at Nurkart. That's a geospatial software and services provider in Norway. Now I will uh, talk about something I think will be a major milestone for humanity. I'm starting off with a journey back in time. 13.7 billion years ago, space, time, matter and energy came into existence. The smallest dots on this rendering uh, is entire galaxies containing billions of stars. Our solar system sits on the outskirts of one of those galaxies. Planet Earth itself is like a tiny blue dot uh, in our solar system. It's the home of every person alive and who has ever lived. As far as our best scientist knows, there is no evidence for life anywhere else in the universe. What each and every one does now at this critical point in time might have a cosmic significance. <clears throat> it's been four billion years since life began on, uh, began on our planet, but something perhaps equally spectacular is about to happen in our lifetime. Space, time, matter and energy, and life itself is about to merge with the digital world. We will be fusing bits and atoms together, uniting the physical with the digital in a shared programmable space. Like the emergence of life in our solar system, this merger could perhaps be unprecedented in the history of cosmos. We haven't figured out what to call this digitally upgraded universe yet. Some of the suggested names are the AR cloud, the metaverse, the mirror world, or the spatial web. There are many suggestions, only time will tell. I like to call it the superverse. And for convenience and good fun, I will use that name during my talk. Currently, people and organizations all over the world are developing real-world spatial computing technology that connects the physical and digital world. But be careful, we are at an existential crossroads. This is an opportunity to make our lives here on our planet much better or much worse. More on that later. First, let's look at what I mean by the superverse. In the superverse, digital objects will live alongside atoms in a shared programmable space attached firmly to our planet. We will experience this world together, like multiplayer, and we will do that with all our senses. And I mean all our, all our senses. Uh, technology is enables, enabling us to see, uh, hear, and touch Digital objects are commonplace in the XR industry. But even smelling and tasting digital, the digital worlds is possible, should we want that. There are actual, actual technologies for that. <clears throat> digital objects in the superverse can behave and be manipulated by us as if they are real physical things, even though they have no mass or substance. But since they are digital, they need not be constrained by the laws of physics. The possibilities are limited only by our imaginations. I don't know if you have seen this demo of HoloLens 2, but this, this woman is actually playing a melody on that virtual, virtual uh, piano based on the sensors that are able to track each of her fingers. So, um,
Yeah, so another point is um, uh, we will also co-inhabit this, uh, this um, uh, machine-readable superverse with our AIs, our robots, our drones, autonomous vehicles and IoT devices. So it's way more than just AR. <clears throat> I even propose that we, in the future, bring our pets into the superverse. One day we might be able to play catch with our dogs using virtual objects that has virtual smells and that, that might try to run away from the dog as the dog, dog approaches. This might sound like the science fiction we have been fed for decades, but the reason that this technology is about to become a reality now is because of a number of recent advances in a wide range of technologies that need to work together. So the most fundamental technologies are computer vision, machine learning, compute power, capacity to store and interpret vast amounts of data, miniaturization of sensors and optical devices, uh, low latency, high speed networking. Google is already providing an experimental glimpse of the superverse with their new version of, uh, of uh, Google Maps where local guides or pixel phone owners can go into AR modes uh, and navigate. And they achieve this using their visual positioning service which offers uh, position and orientation that is way more accurate than GPS and Compass. So it's a game, game changer in spatial computing. Niantic, uh, for Pokemon Go, you've probably heard about that. They are demonstrating prototypes of similar technologies using uh, 5G and edge computing for multi-user AR gaming experiences in the real world. But how will all this new content and apps and services work together. Let's look at how uh, an index of thematic layers might be the key organizing principle for the superverse. This diagram from our state of the AR cloud report, as like the 150 page report created by, in collaboration by almost 40 people uh, uh, who volunteered uh, in open air cloud from the, our different working groups. So we, we produced this um, diagram to convey the, the structure we envision for an AR cloud ecosystem. Uh, at the bottom of the diagram, we show a new type of map that will be the basis of the whole structure. We call this map the reality capture layers. In traditional mapping, we might have called them base layers. But these are not going to be manually digitized 2D maps, but rather rich real-time 3D representations of the world that are automatically generated based on reality capture technologies and using machine learning algorithms. Here is a closer look at the reality capture layers. We think they can be separated into two main layers, and both are directly related to the physical world. The first is the static reality layer, and it will contain parts of reality that change very slowly, like the terrain, buildings, and roads. It's likely to be this layer that provides us with centimeter accurate geospatial uh, position and orientation of AR devices, drones, autonomous vehicles, and robots, by matching what they observed through their cameras and other sensors with the data in this layer. The second one is the real-time reality layer, and it contains the dynamic elements such as people, animals, vehicles, robots, drones, and movable objects. These layers will be at the core of fusing together the digital and the physical world. To make sure that spatial computing becomes open and interoperable, Open Air Cloud thinks that there needs to be a universal standard for a six degrees of freedom position, geographical position and orientation of real and digital objects. We have named this concept Geopose. Uh, as far as we know, there is currently no such standard. Maybe someone in the room knows about it, but uh, Scott Simmons in OGC didn't know about it at least. <clears throat> By the end of this year, we hope to have a, stan a standards OGC Geopose working group. Uh, a draft charter for the SVG has been published by OGC and it's open for public comment until the 5th of September. 
Uh, the draft has the backing of OGC members like OpenAI Cloud, obviously, the British Ordnance Survey, and my day job company, Nurkart. But there's certainly been wider interests. Uh, there, are, there are more people uh, wanting to take part in this. Uh, I really hope we will succeed in this en endeavor. It is my sincere belief that GeoPose will be as fundamental to spatial computing as the URL, Universal Resource Locator, uh, is for the web. And you can quote me on that. Zooming out again, when reality is captured, spatially indexed and made machine readable, we can now start to paint the world with data. We can now put all sorts of digital content and experiences in the real world and have it become an integral part of our surroundings, even adapting to and interacting with real-world moving objects. In this illustration, you see a few of examples of, of uh, thematic layers you can use to organize and annotate spatially indexed content, applications, and services. Layers that we can summon at will and combine however we like. Uh, to access whatever we may want or need. I hope to have time for some cool examples later. Before I continue, I will make the claim that the a fundamental prerequisite for the success of the superverse is that at its very core, core, it's designed as an open platform, just like the web. It must be accessible to anyone, everywhere, using any type of device, on any hardware platform. So let's make the open superverse the biggest part of the superverse. But it doesn't, it's not enough to make it open. There are some other things we need to consider. Capturing reality at such an unprecedented detail could lead to a large number of new potential threats to our privacy, freedom, safety, and security. If we are mindless uh, or careless, we could end up letting governments or large corporation, or corporations know every location, body posture, behavior, social interaction, emotional states, and health states of every person everywhere on the planet. That would make the superverse into the ultimate digital prison. Open AR Cloud will fight fiercely to avoid such a scenario, and we have a lot of ideas on how to. On the other end of the spectrum, we know that accidental leaking of national security secrets just happens without there being sufficient management of that. So we saw that with the, the GPS-based uh, Strava train exercise application that revealed US military bases in Afghanistan. With the type of reality capture we expect for the superverse, we could risk much bigger national security incidents. And also, if we, if we are careless about safety when designing this technology, an attacker might hack into our AR device that augments both our vision and our hearing, maybe other senses as well. And because the, the world is now machine readable, the attacker will know exactly when we are near a cliff or if we are near a high traffic road where uh, a fast moving bus is about to come by. So imagine the attacker injecting a virtual lion that roars and jumps towards us our instincts will compel us to jump away straight into our death. It will look like we had an accident or if we committed suicide. It would be the perfect murder. And we certainly want to do everything we can to avoid those kind of scenarios. So technology is a double-edged sword that is becoming sharper and sharper. The potential for good as well as bad is magnified with each new breakthrough. In a best case scenario, this technology could help usher in a digital renaissance where humanity could flourish like never before, both culturally and economically. In a worst case scenario, if, if the biggest problems remain unsolved, 
we could start descending towards a digital dark age, no better than some of the scariest episodes of Black Mirror. In OpenAI Cloud, we are cautiously optimistic uh, that something close to the best case scenario is within reach. But this is not going to happen by itself. We need the contribution of a lot of dedicated people working together. We are actively working with organizations like the XR Safety Initiatives to look into solutions for privacy, safety, and security. To, pre to prevent walled gardens and to promote interoperability, we have partnered with the Open Geospatial Consortium, and we are in dialogue with uh, a number of other relevant standards bodies, like the Kronos Group and uh, W3C. But this, my friends, is my challenge to you. In my humble opinion, what is ultimately the most ideal road towards a technical ecosystem that is beneficial for everyone is to build it all from the bottom up uh, with free open source software, hardware, and data. This is where all of you fit in. This is where you can make a dent in the universe and help shape the future of spatial computing. There are a gazillion things the open source geospatial community can contribute to, to but let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, imagine a reference open source library that convert, can convert to and from GeoPose and the Cartesian XYZ pose. That will be very helpful for AR rendering of geospatial content. OpenAR Cloud already has a small number of, number of developers who have volunteered to contribute, so please join them. Also, OpenAR Cloud intends to start the work on a reference open source spatial index service. We are considering the support of CityGML and indoor GML. And, of course, we plan to anchor all the objects in the index to the planet using GeoPose. So, uh, the next, next thing there, the, the, imagining like the state of the current AR technologies, they are very immature. So, we have decades of intensive R&D ahead of us before we can hope to realize its full potential. So inspired by the culture of open source that, help, that has helped drive the big bang of machine learning that we see every, like every other talk here is about machine learning now. Uh, <clears throat> so we want to have something similar in the spatial computer sector. We pro propose that inspired by uh, the game engine based tool chain used for R&D in autonomous vehicles we build a simil similar tool chain for AR cloud technologies. So instead of cars, we will simulate AR devices and the performance of AR cloud services in a synthetic world. We propose that we build this tool chain based on an open source game engine, like the Godot engine. So actually, I had a personal meeting with, uh, with the founder of Godot engine, so he said, like, thumbs up for, for, uh, for a community to start to build this tool chain. He himself and, like, his the core people, they are, currently have no time or budget to, to build this. But hopefully someone from this community, some, someone in AR Cloud, uh, could start, start this. So now, if we have time, uh, let's uh, move into some... Um, some of the examples that I referred to uh, of, uh, of how these layers could achieve different things. So the construction layer is the layer where we will architect, plan, and construct our buildings, cities, cities and physical infrastructure. This industry is a 10 trillion US dollar marketplace. And I believe that within maybe 10 years, the superverse will unleash billions, if not trillions, of dollars in value creation in this layer alone. The first features are already on the market. Companies like Trimble, Sightlands, and several others have started to provide ways to bring BIM molds directly to the construction sites where they belong. 
Infrastructure under the ground can be visualized to help avoid costly mistakes and delays. You can show the proposed building on site to stakeholders before construction starts to make sure you build what is most valuable for everyone. And during construction, you will be able to verify that things are done according to plan by looking at the 3D models as they compare to the physical construction. If things do not go according to plan on the construction site, the BIM model can be updated in real time in direct communication with construction engineers who may be even off-site. And it's mediated by a real-time streaming of spatial data to give them a situational awareness. So when the construction is complete, uh, the adjusted BIM model can act as a live digital twin that will be very valuable for maintaining and operating the building in years to come. And now the commerce layer. It is my hope that the commerce layer will provide a great boost to local economies and communities, empowering local businesses and customers alike. So let me provide you with an example inspired by Tim Berners-Lee's solid project and playing out a few years from now in the superverse. Imagine a specimen of Homo photographicus walking around in an unfamiliar city, taking pictures. Suddenly, a small ding sound is heard to his left, and he turns his head, and across the street, he sees an indicator over a shop. Amazingly, a used Hasselbra from, from a camera from the early 70s uh, is off on offer for a bargain price. He's definitely going to check it out. So this matching of seller and potential customer has been mediated through the superverse, initiated by the personal AI assistant uh, on the user's behalf. So what is radically different in this matching than how ads are matched online today is that the user has full control over his own user profile, which is, uh, which is uh, stored uh, Online, uh, so stored in a solid pod where it's kept 100% private and encrypted. So the AI assistant has not revealed the name, age, gender, position, or, or, or anything else than the particular types of cameras that the, the user was interested in. So this is a totally flipped model of, of uh, advertising. And it's just one of many new business opportunities that the superverse can unlock. And then you have the art layer, and actually this is my favorite one. I could probably go on for days about it and only scratch the surface. So imagine a town commissioning a group of artists and craftsmen to build a collaborative work of art for a particular location in that town. The project could fuse together any existing art forms like acting, music, sculpture, painting, and animation and make, make, it, make it spatially aware and respond to what people do and the weather and the light conditions. And you can mix in game technology, AI, and any other type of computes. So, there will be new art forms that the world has never seen and that people have never created, have never experienced. So I'm going to round up with a little bit of about OpenAI Cloud. We, we have a lot of working groups. We are sort of becoming a place where people from around the world can, can uh, combine their efforts to solve hard, chal hard challenges in real-world spatial computing. We got some of the world's leading experts from a wide range of fields. Uh, and, but we're just getting started and we really need more help. We need your help. So join us and help create a better future for all of humanity. And I encourage you to go to open, openairclouds.org for more information. You can download our state of the air cloud report. You can go and watch videos on YouTube from our events. We, we, uh, we, had, we had an event in uh, Santa Clara in Silicon Valley, uh, which is all recorded. And we're going to have a new, new event in uh, Munich in October. It's not announced yet. Uh, but there's a lot of activity going on. So with that, I will open for if there are any questions. Thank you. Thank you.